Hello everyone, welcome to Life Church. My name's Gareth. Uh, it's my privilege to lead the leadership team here uh, and uh, my privilege to be able to speak to you. Seeing some faces that have been away on some holidays, so welcome back. If this is your first one back from the summer, uh, you've come back to a typically uh, British September, should we say that, of just torrential rain yesterday. Absolutely. The field behind but it's already muddy. We went out there yesterday. It was amazing. But it's been great over the summer. I've been so inspired, haven't you, by some of the stories and the testimonies that we've heard. Anyone really enjoyed those testimonies and stories over the summer? So thank you so much to, uh, to John and to Ash and to Miracle uh, and to Elodie, who, who that ordinarily we probably wouldn't run people's journeys with God. It helps us uh, ourselves. And as I've been saying over the past few weeks, it gives us that encouragement that actually if God can do something great in the people that you've seen up here, then actually it gives us hope that he's still working. He's still moving and he can do something in you as well. Amen. And we at Life Church are a people that believe that God is a really weird thing for someone to do, especially if you're brand new in a building. If you are new this morning, welcome, and especially if you're a new student. Um, I know moving to a new city, I did it a few years ago, is a pretty scary, is a pretty scary thing. Um, but I want to go out on a limb here and say that especially if you're a student, get in a church. Do you know what? Life is not meant to be done in isolation on your own. And I believe that actually every single person who is here right now and students who are coming into the city of Bristol are here on purpose for a purpose. God wants to draw you closer to him and for you to become more into the likeness of him in your time here in Bristol, whether that's for a short time or a long time. But we pray it's a long time because we like it here in Bristol, don't we? Don't we, my lover? Absolutely. For those who are new, we're going to be doing some welcome uh, in a few weeks' time, which is a little bit different. Sometimes we've done welcome lunches just to let people know a little bit about the church. But actually what we're going to do is the next free, um, and you can come along and find out a bit about the church. We can find a bit about uh, find out a bit about you, and we can help you to get just to kind of take a bit of a deep breath. It's back into September time. And just to be thinking a little bit about our vision as a church. Do you know, vision is really... Let me say that right from the start. Vision helps us to know where we are going. Scripture talks about actually people without vision actually will just do basically whatever they want. They'll just walk around aimlessly. And there's also things that actually we don't have the time to do. So we need God's vision to help us on the, keep on the right track of where we need to go. And, you know, you as an individual need to have vision for your life. And that might not be, I have a vision to be, although some of you may, to be an astronaut or something, but a vision that says what you're about and gives you some of your non-negotiables. God picture of a preferable direction to go. Do you know personally what it is that you're about? Could you describe what the vision you have for your life is? Would you be able to articulate that? I want to encourage you, if you have never asked or sought God, God, what is it the, what's the vision that you have for my life? I want to encourage you to do so. Because actually what that does is it helps us to see everyone connected, everyone contributing, and everyone growing. Absolutely, absolutely. Stand at it in massive letters. Must remember to say this. But it's our, our vision is, we just keep it quite simple. It's to see everyone connected. You're not turning up to an event when you come to church on Sundays. We want this church family, and I hope you've seen that this morning, uh, with stuff that doesn't you know, quite as polished as it needs to be, uh, like last week's notices. Although I thought last week's notices looked great. They look great. Um, absolutely. But we wanted this to be like a home, like a family, a diverse, beautiful, messy, noisy family of people of all all backgrounds um, are coming in and recognizes the way that God has ordained us to be, living and doing life as part of God's incredible family. And that's what Jesus did on the cross. It's the love that God has shown to each and every one of us. That As we sung in that last song, it's not by anything that we've earned, but it's by God's out to us. It's my vision that we wouldn't just see a bunch of people coming to Life Church, but actually the people that gather here in the week and um, uh, on Sundays will be part of something greater, something of the great big family of God, recognizing their value. Rec get you on the setup team or anything, but you're needed here. You're important here. You are unique. You are created on purpose, for a purpose. There's something that you can bring that no one else can bring to the great big family of God. Amen. And we absolutely need you. And so what God has placed within you, we want to see brought out. You know, we had a great uh, night on Friday night, not to plug if you're not on a team, but we had a great night. Uh, just all of the guys who, uh, um, uh, the guys and girls who were on a, on a team, uh, we gathered on Friday, we ate a lot of ice cream, let's be honest. And there were some very dodgy prizes, but we had a great time just being as the family of God, just to celebrate um, actually what happens when we come together and when we do something all as one. It's incredible. It was really, really great. 
And you know what? If you're feeling like, actually, I want to get connected, being part of a team is actually a great way uh, to get connected. If you're not uh, part of a team, I want to encourage you that don't just be someone who just turns up uh, to a church. Recognize that actually God has got something for you to do. Uh, you have something to contribute. And the third thing is that we want to see everyone growing. You know, there's something incredible about knowing God is that he calls us on this amazing journey, which is what the Bible calls sanctification. And basically, that's a big word for us, actually becoming more like the person that we're following, and that is Jesus. More like Jesus. It's my prayer each and every time that I get up and have the privilege to speak. It's my prayer every time we gather together that actually we would leave this place knowing a little bit more about Jesus, but having a desire to want to be a bit more like Jesus in the everyday week. You know, being a Christian isn't just about coming on, on a Sunday and looking, looking great, singing some Christian songs. It's about the life that we are living outside of this room. And I believe to this world that we are only going to find if actually we are willing to follow the great example that he has given us. You know, you become more like the people that you spend time with. Do you know that? Absolutely. And so actually, if we want to grow uh, more into the person of Jesus, then actually doing stuff like this and gathering together, uh, and especially in the week, is actually going to help us to become those kind of people. People that look like you. And it's my, I, I, pray, I pray for you guys. See, you're the kind of people that go into your workplace and people are like, what's up with that person? What's going on with them? It's like, why did they make that decision? Well, that, that, that was God. That was God leading us. And actually, what you will find is that actually other people will come to us and ask questions about, what is it that's different about you? Because whatever it is, I want it. That's the kind of people that we want to be growing in our love for Jesus. And within that vision, you know, we have some priorities that we've been looking at this year and things that we have sort of... Um, uh, Set aside time. And the first thing that we've been uh, sowing into this year has been the next generation, which is well, yeah, exactly woo indeed. Um, I've just been blown away. Uh, not only seeing two of them baptized over the summer. How cool was that? That was amazing. We had some drama in the baptism department last week. <laughs> We're working on that. That's it. You see what I mean? Noisy, messy family. That was definitely noisy and messy. And especially where Gemma nearly fired water across the stage and, and, and drew. go to a church and just to hear a bit about God, but it would be something real in their lives. Do you know the generation that is rising up is a generation that is asking bigger questions than I think the generation that I was part of was asking. And they're asking not just, can you just teach me a bit of knowledge? They're like, what is this God you are talking about? And how can I experience him in my life? And we as a church want to be people that are not only... As a side note, do you realize that you kids and youth, that actually our voice really matters? It really matters. Our facial expressions really, really matter. And you know what? We have the opportunity to encourage and lift up and spur next generation so that they wouldn't just grow up thinking, oh, well, I'm part of a church and maybe one day, you know, maybe I'll have something to bring. They will realize right now that my amazing, amazing children and youth worker, Gemma, who's out, out serving. Um, we've, we've seen so many more kids and young people that have got connected with Life Church. Um, and do you know what that means? That means we need more leaders and more people to come and help. Now, I'm doing a little shameless plug on behalf of Joe. Who said, but, oh, well done, Louise. Um, a little shameless plug. But, do you know, if you're not on a team and you're thinking, actually, maybe I could be on a team, do you know what? Can I encourage you to consider serving, oh, excuse me, to change the lives of some young people uh, that will alter the course of them towards what God has for them? And so if you're someone who's not serving on a team right now, I want to encourage you. Go to the connections. For that. We don't, they don't all just sing a fireball dance and do TikTok videos. Do they, Steph? No, they don't. Great. Excellent. A great opportunity for some community to be built around the love of God. And it's beautiful to see what's happening there. And I just want to say a big thank you to you guys uh, for all the hard work that you are doing and Gemma as well. Let's give them a big round of applause. Yeah. Us here on purpose, for a purpose, a bit like how he's placed you here. And that we don't just want to wait, but actually we want to make an impact into this local community. Tara, uh, just over three months ago, uh, began working as our community outreach pastor. Uh, working specifically in our church to help us connect with our community. Tara, how's it going? Five years ago, I said a prayer to God. I said, here I am, Lord, send me. Dangerous prayer. And um, then time goes. I had a vision given to me of God about a fire, that off that fire, sparks would come and touch people in the community. So fast forward to where we are today. 
you know, when the position came up, I was like, oh, this is a dream, but really, am I the right person? And so I prayed into it, and by the grace of God, here I am. So yes, community outreach has been um, something near and dear, because really, it's local missions is what we're talking about. So we're reaching out to the community, not only in fish ponds, but thinking bigger of, how can we help Bristol? How can we help then spread the good news of God throughout our but in our local community, we kicked off in February before I was actually doing this role with a tea and tots group. Now, some of you may have heard that. Some of you might not be aware of it because your kids are bigger than tea and tots. Thing is families come from all different generations, from grandmothers to mothers to fathers with their little ones. We're seeing diversity in culture. It's not just all because we're seeing them come together because nobody knew anybody when they walked in the door. The amazing thing about Vassals is it used to be a real flourishing community, but now it isn't. There isn't much to connect to. So these people are coming in because we're doing a, something called the Community Hub, which will be launching, I think, estimated October. And what it is is a local area for people to come to, to then as a family go, I I'm in need or I need some help with this. And we'll be able to then navigate them. And us at Life Church and myself are part of that team with Bristol Charities at Vassals. It's an amazing thing happening. It's like God came along and said, you know what? You guys have answered my call. You've been obedient. To I'm just going to roll out a red carpet. And that's literally what I've experienced since being on the job. And that's praise to God, because it's not me, guys. It's not me. But what's in this group is where I've been able to minister and meet with families that, you know what, don't all have it as easy as some of us here. And so we've ministered to, I'll give you an example, there's one family that we've been able to share with. And I won't use her name, and I won't use her children's ages or anything, but she's a single mom of three children. And she came to us because tea and tots is a fun thing to do with her little one. And um, she didn't really speak to anybody. And so we kept talking to her. And month, week by week, we saw that her personality would come out. Sometimes in term breaks, her other son would come as well. And what she did is she actually asked us for help. She's an independent woman, never needed help before. But she's gone through a time where it's been a bit difficult. And so in that, she said, you know, can you help me with just some cleanup? And we're like, OK, let's see what we can do. So what I did was them working with Bristol Charities and then also contact another um, body called The Noise. Anybody heard the Bristol Noise amongst our group here? So I contacted them. They helped me get the things in order. We went out on the end of July. We went out and we sat and worked with what did she want done? So in her back garden, she had this amazing brick shed. But in that was a bunch of stuff that nobody could get to. To be able to have a room for herself of this into the storage of that brick shed. But when you walked up there, you can't see nothing. It's literally dirt, rubbish, garden stuff, all the way up. So you didn't even know there was a shed there. We went in three hours later with a team of seven, I think, seven of us. It was completely cleared out. Skip overflowing, stuff taken out of the shed, and it's completely accessible. But what was interesting, okay, that's great. We went and cleaned up a garden. But what was amazing is during that time, the neighbor next door came out and said, what are y'all doing? <laughs> so then we talked to her and we're out cleaning up the garden and that. She said, oh, you know, my grandson's tried to get the top of that hedge. Could you try that for me? So we did that. Then the neighbor behind came through and said, you know what? I want access to the shed as well. So she brought out her clippers and her hedge things and whatever thingamajigs that guys, you, I'm not a gardener, and came out and started digging from the other end. So we have the neighbor behind, the neighbor next door, all digging to get to this mutual meeting point. Then they said, well, the neighbor across the street, she's an 86-year-old lady, that she can't get out of her garden because the hedge is overgrown. Can we look at that? And these are all things that are going forward that we're looking at. How can we bless and spur something on in that community to help each other? Because it's not about solving all the problems, but it's about igniting a spark that would then spread throughout that community. So what we're seeing is, you know, this is the thing, you know, I come and, and, and talk about this and say, you know, I... I not anybody different than all of you. I am not good at gardening. I'm not good at, I can't sew. I can cook a little bit. But you know what's amazing is when you talk to people where they're at, when you go, then they open up to you. You know, we all know about the sower and the seed. We know about that little mustard seed that's planted. And that's what we're doing is planting little seeds, figuratively and literally, in our community. So what I would say to you is, you know what, we need to be the hands and feet of it's different about you. Not about tasks at hand, but why are you so happy? Why do you have joy when actually you have nothing else? And that's the stuff that we're ministering to. But the thing is, I'm going to put a shameless plug. Another one. Yeah, another one. We can't be the hands and feet of Jesus if I have no hands and feet. So what I'm saying to you, church, 
is that if you're interested in coming and sharing whenever the need may be, and you can say, you know what, I actually have an hour on that Saturday morning to come and help you out, or I have an hour on Tuesday, then would you come and see me? So if anybody wants to come see me afterwards, please do, to be a part of this. It's an amazing opportunity. And the doors just keep opening, and people keep knocking, but we want to let them in. Amazing. Thank you, Sarah. Great job. Yeah, we have a WhatsApp group for that, so you can join, join that WhatsApp group. But I just, I, I love that, and I've seen that happen before, where you begin just you know, doing something innocuous, like clearing a garden, and then you've got other people that are coming, oh, what, what, what are you doing? Why, why are you doing that? How much are you charging for that? We're like, no, we're, we're just doing it. Thank you, Tara, you're doing a great job. And I just want to encourage you, if you want to get stuck into that, it doesn't happen like every, every Saturday, but there is a great need out there, and we want to be Jesus' hands and feet in the feet. And again, this is something I would say that we're really, we're really just continuing to seek God. How can we give some thing away of what God has done in this church to our city. About 18 months ago, um, if you've been in this church any, uh, any length of time, you might be forgiven for thinking we like move every six months. We don't. But we used to meet in a very small building on Forest Road. Um, and actually, that is something that has now been taken over by another slightly smaller church that is blessing the community in that area and operating as a really thriving church. And that is something incredible, that it's almost a legacy of this church that you've done. in our, It means nothing to me if actually Life Church is going great and there are a bunch of other the churches that, are, that aren't going so great. And it, it feels to me like actually what God wants us to do is to be thinking kingdom in that. And that's something that we're active and praying into. So God is doing, Bristol, I want to tell you that God is on the move in this place. God is doing something in a generation which I believe is going to transform this city uh, from what it is right now into something that is going to honor and give uh, glory to God. Uh, and it's so exciting. And so while all this is happening, our call is just to pursue that vision. Don't with one another being contributing recognizing the, that God has given you something to contribute and by growing, growing in your faith this year. Do you know, my, my heart, my prayer for you, Life Church, is that in a year's time, your faith will not look the same as it is right now. That you will be people who are growing in love for God. It, however old you are, we can go as deep as we want to into God, but it's not up to him, it's up to us. Wow. As deep as you want to go into God this year. The door is open for us if we will pursue him. And what I love about this, and I'm just going to wrap up by just giving us a short encouragement from Scripture. This is modeled by Jesus in the Gospels. Yet we didn't just make it up. Actually, what we're doing is actually we are attempting to follow Jesus, the one who lived this out in terms of being connected and being contributing and growing. Um, and whilst, uh, you know, I'd love to just, you know. So anyone got a paper Bible? Yes. Come on, paper Bible. Ooh. Nothing better than a bit of paper. Um, we're going to go to Mark chapter 6, this. Jesus went from village to village teaching the people. And he called his 12 disciples together. And he began sending them out two by two, giving them authority to cast out evil spirits. He told them to take nothing for the journey except a walking stick. No food, no traveler's bag, no money. He allowed them to wear sandals, but not to take a change of clothes. Wherever you go, he said, Stay in the same house until you leave town. So the disciples went out telling everyone they met to repent of their sins and turn to God. And they cast out many demons, healed many people, and anointed them with olive oil. Now this word to us in our short time together. Speak to us, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Three just short things, because I think when we look at the life of Jesus and his disciples and we see how they, did, uh, how they did life together, we see men and women that do life together. We see men and women that are sent together, but also men and women that minister together, live amongst us. He came to live amongst us. He left his glory. If you read in, in Philippians chapter 2, which is a, a book, it's a letter written uh, by a guy called Paul. He writes to the church, clothe himself in humanity to come and to be amongst us. We're remembering on Friday night, this church used to be called Emmanuel Pentecostal Church when it was first came around, around in the 1930s. And Emmanuel is that beautiful word that's used in scripture that means God with us. Jesus came and dwelt with us. And when you look at how people understood God or the gods, especially equity, usually what people's minds would conjure up is, is, is someone or something that is kind of aloof and, and other and over there, probably a bit unpredictable, quite hard to please. Otherwise, they might be angry, but we don't know if they're the one true God, the God that has always been and the God that always will, Emmanuel. Not simply just to kind of float around, do things himself. So just to let you know, this is me, I'm God, I'm coming amongst, I'm coming amongst you, but I, I'm still quite aloof and I'm still quite God-like. No, he comes as human. 
He comes as one of us. He comes to live with us and to intentionally engage with us in the most human-like way possible. And that's to be in relationship with us as well and we're not a lone ranger now we do see Jesus carving out time to be it's often described in scripture as finding a place to pray that is important and I want to challenge you just a quick side you've got your alone time with Jesus have we got some alone time with Jesus like carved out and planned talked about thought about of our diary we need that and yet most of all what we see in Jesus is actually he carved out the majority of his time to be with his disciples and that's just that's just what God's heart is for us. Right back to the beginning of Scripture in Genesis chapter 1. Jesus, uh, sorry, uh, God is described and the notion of God with us and dwelt with us humans and shown us that he wants us to know him. Psalm 68 verse 6 is God places the lonely in families. That's what God is about. He's about bringing people in. And it says he sets the prisoners free and gives them joy. So this challenge from Jesus is not only to be in community. Uh, and I say that, especially to uh, if you're younger in the room, because the prevailing narrative, maybe just Google it, TikTok it, um, uh, you know, look at social media. That will tell you kind of what you need. That will refuel you. And actually, God's eternal wisdom, which is modeled by Jesus here, is that actually we're made to be together. We're made to rub shoulders with people, real people, in community. And you know, that's a little, actually, this is family. And actually, um, it means a lot to me uh, to know that when you leave this place, that you know that you were noticed. <laughs> and that, that models something of what God wants you to know, which is that you are noticed. You are loved. You are invited to know the God of love wherever you are. And one of the ways we outwork that kind of vision on a smaller uh, scale for us here at Life Church is our prayer pods. And if you don't know what prayer pods are, they're groups of smaller people that meet, encourage, and pray. It really is that simple. And I know for some of you that, uh, you know, work can be busy. So it's WhatsApp group, <laughs> encourage, and pray. And that's cool too. I have a brilliant bunch of guys on the prayer pods. We do little videos. We do uh, little uh, voice notes. We meet up, um, and we encourage, and we pray. And this is not a groundbreaking idea, I've got to tell you. This is actually something that Jesus is modeling here with his disciples because actually what he did was he intentionally lived part of his life with others, in community with others, sharing and meeting with people who are beginning to know you, who can pray for you, who can encourage you. And you know what? That's a bit scary. I appreciate I appreciate it. It's, it's scary to be vulnerable with people. But actually, if we're serious about growing into more into the likeness of Jesus, that's what he did. And he did it because actually as we do that, what we find is that actually we are more encouraged by being around people who encourage us, funny that, uh, than if we were not. That we are more blessed when we encourage someone else. So if we're serious about following the example of Jesus, I want to ask you right now, where are you connected? And who are you connected with? If you're not currently sharing some of your life with another, and like I say, we do that in prayer pods here, um, I want to challenge you to consider it. I'm not going to force you to do it because living like Jesus does means that actually we have to take some responsibility to say, yeah, I want to, I want to grow into more to the lights of Jesus. I want others to sharpen me up, even though that's a bit uncomfortable. Who have you got like that in your life today? The second thing is that we see the disciples are sent together. I love this. And this passage is like kind of slap bang in the middle of the disciples sort of being with Jesus. So Jesus has called the disciples. He's taught them. Uh, he's, he's traveled around. He's performed some miracles. And now he says, out you go. But what you'll notice about this, this is in Mark chapter 6. So this is not like when Jesus finished, like now Galilee, sort of slap bang in the middle of the kind of uh, strip of Israel, Palestine, Syria, where it is now. Um, uh, so we think it was sort of on the northern edge of that and these disciples, they're definitely not the finished articles, but they're sent out doing the things that Jesus was doing. I mean, that would be pretty scary. The Son of God is with you in, in the flesh, and he's performing miracles, and he says, now you go and do the same. But yet that's exactly what he does. You see, the people of God, having encountered the presence of God, are always sent out. Do we get that? The people of God are always sent out so that others would encounter the good news of Jesus. Because the incredible thing I'm learning about Jesus and, and about the life that he wants us to lead is that the goal of doing life together is not to stay doing life together. It's not. 
The goal of being part of it, the purpose is that it's done in us a way and we can see other that love and that peace as well. And if by definition others are going to experience it, then when they respond, our communities will change and will grow. And that's really, so you're part of a prayer pod and you're thinking, oh, I really quite like my prayer pod. I quite like the people that I connect with. I don't really want anyone else in there. And I just want to gently challenge is that they are more about what we are giving out to others people rather than what we're receiving from it. Because in God's economy, actually, when we give, we are blessed. That's what he says. And it's true. I mean, we think about Christmas and we think about, oh, it's great to get lots of gifts. But actually, isn't it true that the more joy we find is actually on seeing someone else really appreciate something that we've given to them? Jesus's model of community in church is that we expect that it will bring change. The reality is that in the community of God, Jesus welcomed you, all your faults and all your failures and all the things that you're good at and all the things that you're not so good at. Actually, you and I have been welcomed into the family of God. Jesus, he gave that so that we would know it was us to do the same, friends. He calls us to do the same. So when we think about our church, when we think about perhaps if we're part of a prayer pod, What's our mindset and our attitude? Is it just, I just want to keep it all the same? This is a nice number of people. Let's not have anybody else. This is a good group of people. I don't really like other people, outside people that scare me. Is it just, I just want to keep things the way I like it. I want to challenge you that that is not what Jesus did for us. And we are called to do the same. Now, there is value in consistency. When you're talking about being connected, there is an incredible value in deep relationships built over a long period of time. That is good. Jesus modeled that. But that always comes alongside a willingness to be sent out and by definition, by others coming in. You know, deep relationships can never be at the expense of seeing new life breaking out. And you know, my my youngest son uh, modeled this brilliantly when we were moving here to Bristol uh, two and a half years ago. And, and, and our, as a family, we were like, wow, this is really sad. We're leaving uh, the city that I grew up in, Portsmouth. Um, and uh, we kind of had this conversation. Oh, wow, it feels like we're really leaving lots of people behind. But actually, what we then realized is actually, no, no. We've now got the opportunity to make new friends in this place, Bristol, as well as still continue the relationships that we've got. But now we've got twice as many. Yeah. And actually, we realized that that is an incredible, that's difficult. It's a disruption, but it's an incredible blessing. And God wants us to see that. The goal is not just to keep things the same, but actually it's for God to add things to us, add people to us, so that actually we can see that transfer to other people. And then those deep relationships actually can continue to grow in depth, but perhaps in a different way. Guys, if we're serious about following the example of Jesus, where's our heart on this? Is it your vision for things just to stay the same? For a church or a prayer pod just to stay as it is. Are we in a posture of thinking, hey, I just need to, I just need to receive right now? Because I want to challenge you. Jesus is, if we're serious about following Jesus' example, it's about what is it that we can give to others. And we will find that there is blessing in that place. Okay, finally. The disciples are sent out to minister together. It just... It just seems crazy to me why Jesus would send out the disciples. Why why does he send us into the world? Why does he not do it himself? He would do a much better job. Do you not think? Jesus, you would just do a much, you just come and do it. And yet Jesus says, no, no, I want to send you guys out. I mean, can you imagine the carnage that probably happened and ensued with the disciples who were were only six chapters into Mark. They probably haven't learned very much. They're perhaps still a bit rough around the edges and they just get sent out. Yeah, go and heal some sick people, cast out some demons. Can you imagine the carnage? And yet does Jesus say, oh, this is going to be tough? No. Actually, what he does, what he does is he sends them, but he gives them some of his authority to go with them. I mean, that's not like playing it safe keeping it cool, you know, going easy on them. That's saying, you guys, go. But interestingly, what you see is that in verse 8 to 9, he says this. He told them to take nothing for the journey except a walking stick, no food, no traveler's bag, no money. He allowed them to wear sandals but not take a change of clothes. Is that because Jesus just doesn't like us to wash or to change our clothes? No, actually, what we see is that Jesus sends out his disciples. He calls them to become completely reliant on God as they go. The disciples are sent out in the power and the authority of Jesus, but still remaining reliant on him to provide for them. 
God is a God who does not change, break his promise. So when it says in scripture that he has gone before you, guess what, my friends? He's gone before you. When Jesus says, I will be with you until the end of the age. Guess what, guys? He's with you in his authority. But we remember whose ministers we are. And that's each one of you, not just me, but each and every one of you. And the amazing thing is that we read what happens in verse 13. They cast out many demons. They healed many sick people, anointing them with olive oil. Do you know what? I believe God wants to empower us and excite us again for what happens when he gets hold of each and every one of us. I think I'm up for being connected. I'm up for being sent, but I'm up for seeing you work through me by the power of your feet. To do the, see the things we read about in Scripture. Do you know there are things in Scripture that I have not seen with my own eyes? And I'm a little bit annoyed about that. And I believe that there could be a day coming if there is a if there's if there's people like you and I who are willing to say, yes, God, we're up for it. They're a little bit strange. They play last week's notices, but God is moving there. God is doing something there. God is moving in that place. And do you know what's really exciting about that is that you and I get to be part of that now. You might be sitting there thinking, I don't know much about the Bible. I've only been a Christian a, a short length of time. Um, I haven't been to church for ages. My life's a, a bit of a mess. You might be thinking all of those kind of things. And I think what God would say to you in the example of the disciples is like, you're ready. You're ready. What, because we're ready? No, no, because he's ready. Because he's ready. If you'll allow him. And every single one of us here has a part to play in that. Not in five years' time when, when you're a bit more mature and you've you know, sorted a few things out you know, and everything okay. And you're, but right now, right now you can be part of what God is doing in this place, in your life, in your street, in your family, in your friends. God wants to use you right now because what God has begun in you has the potential to point another to Jesus. And if we allow that, that will change us. That will grow us. See, I believe actually the disciples came back and said, yeah, we healed the sick and we anointed people and we saw demons flee and they were more changed actually perhaps than some of the people they ministered to. And that's the incredible thing that we realize about God is that he's got a plan. He knows what he's doing, friends. He knows what he is doing. So if we're serious about following the example of Jesus, how willing and ready are we to be conduits for God's love and power to move through? How hungry are you for the things of God in your life right now. And you know what? I'll put my hand up and say, there are many times where I am just not thinking about that at all. I'm probably more thinking about, why is it raining again? I don't have enough wet weather gear for this weather in Bristol. I'm more thinking about, why is my bank account looking a lot less, a lot lighter than I thought it was? Why is, why am I so tired? You know, I'm thinking about all of those kind of things. And you know what I want to be thinking about? I want to be thinking about, God, what is it that you are doing right here and right now? And would you come and empower me and anoint me and fill me again? Bam, why don't you come up and join me? We're just going to spend a bit of time just responding to that and, uh, and singing a song of worship. But as we land here, I just want to encourage you. God knows you and sees you. I feel like someone just needs to hear that this morning, that God knows you and sees you. Maybe you haven't even been, so had any meaningful conversations uh, with anyone (laughs) here this morning, but God knows you and he sees you. He knows why you're here this morning. (laughs) He perhaps knows why you're thinking, how am I going to get out without that weird guy at the front, like (laughs) shaking my hand? That's not going to happen. But he knows it. But you're here for a reason and here for a purpose. Not out, but if you're willing If you're willing to follow him, that he will lead you. He will send you. If you're willing, why don't you stand with me? I'm just going to invite us to come and pray.